Welcome to this quick introduction to chapter 13, which is about the open economy in the long run. In the previous chapter, we extended the model to allow for international trade and also international lending and borrowing. And now we use this model to analyze how the open economy works in the long run. So this analysis resembles the analysis of the closed economy in the long run in chapters 2 to 6. In this chapter, we look at a long-run equilibrium where production and employment are on their natural levels, as determined in chapters 2 and 6. And we consider a situation where there is a constant rate of inflation, and this rate of inflation is foreseen, so there is perfect foresight about inflation. And also, the currency may be appreciating or depreciate, and that is also foreseen. So if there are inflation differences between countries, currencies may increase or decrease in value. But this is foreseen by the investors. And the questions we ask are, what determines the real interest rate in the open economy? What determines the current account? What determines the real exchange rate? And what is the role of the real exchange rate? And what determines the capital stock production and income in the small open economy? So we have this key relative price in the open economy, which is the real exchange rate, the price of goods in the small open economy compared to the world price level. And we consider a long run equilibrium where the real exchange rate is constant. That is reasonable if either we have no growth or if we compare countries with similar growth rates. So for a given real exchange rate, then the nominal exchange rate is the real exchange rate times the foreign price level divided by the domestic price level. So this says that if the prices in the economy are high, then the value of the currency will be low. That's very logical. And then we can use this to determine the rate of appreciation of the currency. So we use our rule of thumb, assuming constant real exchange rate, we get that the rate of appreciation of the currency is pi star minus pi. So if, if domestic inflation is lower than foreign inflation, the currency will appreciate, it will increase in value. So that's quite logical, and of course that is the main reason why exchange rate changes, that countries that have low inflation, their currencies tend to increase in value. Countries that have high inflation, their currencies tend to decrease in value. And we can combine this with the interest parity condition and the perfect foresight assumption, and then we find at the bottom of this page that the real interest rate in this small open economy is equal to the world real interest rate, which we take as given for the small open economy. So this is a key insight. In the long run, the real interest rate is determined in the world capital market. And that means that the required return on capital in the open economy is determined in the world financial market. And we can think of the world as a closed economy, so the determinants of the real interest rate are the ones that we analyzed in chapter 4, where we looked at the natural rate of interest. And what about the real exchange rate? That's another important price in the open economy. How is the real exchange rate determined? Well, we have the equilibrium condition for the goods market. This equilibrium condition says that the amount that we produce, which is now determined by the natural level of production, should be equal to consumption and investment and government expenditure and net exports. Alternatively, you can write this as follows. You could say that net exports must be equal to what we produce minus what we use ourselves, which is consumption, investment and government use. But the question is, what brings about this equality? there must be some price that adjusts so as to bring about that equality. In the closed economy, 
it was the real interest rate that adjusted to bring equality between demand and supply. But what about the open economy? We've just said that in the long run, the real interest rate is determined in the world financial market. So that means that there must be some other price that brings about this equality. And if we stare at these equations, well, we see production is given at the natural level of production, taxes are exogenous, assets are what they are, real interest rate determined in the world economy, the capital stock is inherited from the past. There's only one thing that can bring about the equilibrium here, and that is the real exchange rate. So we see that the real exchange rate is the key relative price that brings about equality between demand and supply in the open economy. So in the closed economy, the real interest rate, that is the intertemporal relative price, is the key price that makes demand equal to supply in the open economy. In the long run, it's instead the real exchange rate, the international relative price that brings about the equality. And we can illustrate this here if we have the real interest rate on the vertical axis and income on the horizontal, and then we have consumption investment, which depend negatively on the real interest rate, and then we have the natural level of production, and RA is the autarky interest rate, the interest rate you would have if you didn't borrow or lend from the rest of the world. And now, if the world interest rate is higher, then consumption and investment will be lower, so the use in the domestic economy will be lower than production, and the rest of the goods must be exported. And for those goods to be exported, you need to have the appropriate level of the real exchange rate. So you need to adjust the relative price of domestic goods compared to foreign goods your competitiveness has to be on the right level. And you can use these graphs to analyze various shocks. Here is uh, the effect of an increase in domestic investments, how that affects net exports and the real exchange rate. Okay, so this shows the important role of the real exchange rate as the key price that brings balance in the open economy. So we can also look at growth, long-run growth in the open economy. That is quite straightforward. We have this condition that determines the optimal capital stock, that the marginal product of capital divided by 1 plus the markup minus depreciation should be equal to the required return on capital, which is the real interest rate. And we just said that the real interest rate is determined in the world market. So that is R star. And this now determines the steady state capital stock in the open economy. So if we recall in the closed economy, the required return on capital was determined by rho, which was the subjective discount rate, and also the growth rate in the economy. Now instead, the required return is determined in the world capital market. Once you have access to the international financial markets, there's no limit to how much you can borrow in this simplified model. That means that you should just borrow and invest until this optimum condition is met. If you start with the low capital stock, just borrow and get the optimal amount of capital because as long as the marginal revenue product of capital minus depreciation is higher than the real interest rate, it is good to borrow so as to finance investment. So given that we have perfectly integrated financial markets, then the household savings do not constitute a constraint on investment. If savings are not enough to finance investment, we should just borrow so as to finance the optimal amount of capital. And then that determines the long-run level of production. And in this open economy, the adjustment to equilibrium is, in theory, very fast. You could basically borrow overnight so as to get the desired capital stock. And we learn from this that 
borrowing internationally is not necessarily a, something negative. So if a country has a current account deficit, it's not necessarily a sign of that something is wrong in that country. If a country has very good investment opportunities, it makes a lot of sense to borrow. So in order to look at whether a current account reflects a problem, we have to look deeper at the causes of that deficit. So this figure shows how the stock of capital is determined in the small open economy and thereby we also determine the long run level of production. But in the open economy you not only own capital, you also may own financial assets or you may have debt. So what determines the foreign debt of a country or its claims on other countries? Well, suppose you have an economy where you have no population growth or technological development. We have the capital stock and therefore production determined by this condition that determines the optimal capital stock. Assume we have no government borrowing and the government is, has its budget in balance and we have a constant real interest rate. What will determine the current account and the debt? Well, it will depend on whether the consumers are saving or dissaving. And that in turn depends on their subjective rate of discount. So suppose that the subjective rate of discount by accident happens to be equal to the world real interest rate. What does this imply? Well, if we look at the first order condition for consumption, the so-called Euler equation, we see that then the consumers will plan for a constant level of consumption. And if the consumers plan for a constant level of consumption, that means that they are neither saving nor dissaving. They are actually keeping their wealth level constant because that's the only way you can keep consumption constant. And since the capital stock is constant, this means that the consumers will keep their stock of loans to foreign countries constant. And that means that the current account balance is zero and income is constant. So this is a, a long-run equilibrium situation with constant consumption and balance in the current account. But you can then think of what happens if Rho is bigger than R star. So consumers are more impatient than the, the foreign consumers. Well, then they will run a deficit. You will have a deficit and the consumers will reduce their assets or increase their borrowing. And um, in, the, in the book you can read more about what will happen, but essentially the consumers will end up very poor. So we learn that the current account is determined by the willingness of the consumers to save and, and the need for investment in the open economy. And in fact, if you look at the data, you see that there's quite a lot of international borrowing. If you look at investment and savings rates in different countries, this is for 2008, you see that there's not a close correlation. Some countries are saving more than they are investing and the other way around. And also if you look at the data, you see that there are quite persistent so-called imbalances in the current account. For example, the US has had a deficit in the current account for a very long period. If you look at Japan, they have instead had a surplus most of the time since the beginning of the 80s. And this must then reflect somehow the incentives to save and invest in these countries. So should we worry about the current account? Should we aim for a balance in the current account? Well, we see that a current account deficit will arise if the incentives to invest are high or the incentives to save are low. But a current account deficit does not necessarily imply some kind of market failure. 
there may be fully rational reasons to have a deficit or a surplus in the current account, depending on the investment opportunities and other factors. So what we need to ask is whether there are market failures, whether the incentives are correct, and whether the government finances are sustainable and whether the debt of the private sector is too large so that there is a risk of a financial crisis. These are the questions we should ask. The current account may be a signal that something is wrong, but we need to go behind that in order to clarify where exactly the problem is and if it is a problem. So in this chapter, we used our model of the open economy to analyze the open economy in the long run. And we found a number of results. For example, we found that in the long run, the real interest rate, that is the required return on capital, is determined in the world financial market. And given for the small open economy, we saw that the real exchange rate is a key relative price that brings equality between demand and supply in the small open economy. We also saw that the current account depends on the incentives to save and invest, and that current account deficits and surpluses can remain for quite some time. So good luck with your studies of the open economy in the long run.